Okay, good morning students. Welcome to yet another class of physics and we are dealing with chapter refraction of light and so far we have studied about uh, what is refraction, why refraction happens, what is refractive index, how to calculate refractive index and uh, we studied about refractive index of different medias and we learned about refraction through a rectangular glass block. Today we will be learning about refraction through a prism. So we should know what is a prism. So prism, a picture is given here of a prism. A prism is simply a homogeneous transparent refracting medium which is bounded by at least two non-parallel plane surface inclined at some angle. So basic structure of a prism is somewhat like a triangle. Okay, a prism is a homogeneous transparent refracting medium which has or which is bounded by at least two non-parallel refracting surface and which should be inclined at an angle. So a triangular shape is a basic structure for a prism. There can be other shapes for prism also. At least two of the refracting surface should be non-parallel. So I will draw only the friend plane of the prism. So prism can be an equilateral prism with all the angles same at 60 degree or it can be a right angled prism with one of the angles 90 degree and the other one may be uh, 60 and 30. And also you can have a 90 degree prism. which shares the same base angles which is 45 degree and 45 degree. So these are the different types of triangulated prisms which we can have. So now we will look into detail on how a prism works. So what does a prism do? Let this be a prism and let there be two uh, surface like I am drawing it in three dimensional, trying to draw it in three dimensional structure. So A, B, C, D, E and F. So here we have a plane surface and this plane surface A, B, C, D, this is one of the refracting plane surface. There is another plane surface A, B, E, F that is also a refracting surface and they both are at an angle to each other and that angle is called the angle of the prism. So here we can represent angle of prism by a name let it be theta. The angle of the prism here is theta and we have an edge which is common to both refracting surface and that common edge is called the refracting edge of the prism. That common edge is called the refracting edge of the prism. We have angle of the prism and refracting edge of the prism. So a light ray falls on this refracting surface. Let a light ray come and fall on this refracting surface and perpendicular to the refracting surface we usually draw the normal and the light ray is entering from a rare medium air to a denser medium which may be most of the time this prism is made up of glass. It can be made with other materials also. And if it is entering, the light ray is entering obliquely at an angle, it will bend towards the normal and it will strike the next surface and it will bend away from the normal while emerging out of the prism. Now we will look into detail on how it works. So I am drawing the principal section of the prism, that is the front side of the prism. Let this be an equilateral prism. So all angles in the principal section of the prism are equal. Let's name this prism as ABC. It's the name of the principal section of this prism. And let a light ray starting from point P falls on the prism at point Q. And at the point Q, we have to draw a normal for this 
surface and let the normal be n e so n q e is the normal the angle of incidence i is here between p q and q n and this light ray is entering from a rare medium air to a denser medium glass this prism is made up of glass when it enters into glass medium it will bend towards the normal that means instead of going instead of going in this direction the light ray is bending towards the normal now this light ray is passing through the prism and it now reaches the next surface ac let that point be r what happens at r now the light ray is trying to enter from a denser medium into a rarer medium and the light ray will bend here also we have to draw a normal the light ray will bend let that normal be m r e m r e the light ray will bend away from the normal instead of going straight like this it will bend away from the normal if you produce this light ray backwards it will meet the path of the incident ray at an angle we can call that angle as delta we will come back to that angle later at first there is the incident ray pq which forms an angle of incidence i with the normal and which enters into the medium and let that angle be angle of refraction 1 r r1 and it strikes the second surface AC at the point R and from there it is uh, again refracted and emerges out of the prism and let this angle be E. So angle of incidence is there and here we have angle of refraction 1 and then here what happens is again uh, there is a normal drawn here and again there is angle of incidence 2 and then there is angle of refraction 2. So this angle of refraction 2 we represent it as angle of emergence, angle, angle of incidence and angle of emergence and here we have at the top here there is the angle of the prism which is A over here and now we got one more angle which is the angle between path of the incident ray and the emergent ray produced backwards. When the emergent ray is produced backwards it meets the path of the incident ray at a point and the angle at that point between these two paths is called the angle of deviation. So remember we got we got this incident ray, the first refracted ray and the emergent ray. The angle of the prism angle of incidence 1 then we have the emergent ray angle between the emergent ray and the incident ray produced and that angle is called angle of deviation angle of deviation or how much the light ray is deviated by this prism so light ray is trying to pass in this direction and when we place a prism over there it is deviated and it is emerging through another direction. So here this how much the light ray is bending that is called the angle of deviation of this given prism and we have the angle of prism here. So mainly how many angles are there four angles which we have to remember angle of incidence, angle of emergence, angle of deviation and the angle of the prism and we have two more angles here which is the first refracting angle and the second angle of incidence first in first angle of refraction and the second angle of incidence are also there now we will look at the factors affecting the angle of deviation of a prism
okay there are four factors which affect the angle of deviation of a prism the first factor which affects the angle of deviation of a prism is the angle of incidence the first factor which affects the angle of deviation is the angle of incidence so angle of incidence when you draw a rough diagram over here this is the angle of incidence here between the normal and the incident ray and this is the angle of deviation here delta so if you decrease the angle of incidence or if you increase the angle of incidence this angle of deviation also changes so to learn about this change in the angle of incidence and angle of deviation we have to practically do it and draw a graph so uh, physicists have been doing it and they got a graph between the angle of incidence and the angle of deviation and this graph is called the i delta graph the graph between the angle of incidence and angle of deviation plotted in a graph is known as i delta graph so when they plotted the i delta graph they found that when the angle of deviation ang when the angle of incidence was minimum deviation was maximum when angle of incidence was when at minimum angle of incidence the deviation was maximum and when we keep on increasing the angle of incidence when the angle of incidence was increasing the deviation started decreasing that means when they plotted the points the deviation started decreasing as we increased the angle of incidence but at one point it stopped there and then from that angle of incidence onwards when we increased the angle of incidence the angle of deviation started increasing so what we got when we joined all these points what we got was somewhat a u shape for the graph between angle of incidence and angle of deviation that means when the angle of incidence was smaller the angle of deviation was also deviation was greater and when you increased the angle of incidence angle of deviation became smaller and smaller and at after a point called angle of minimum deviation the angle of deviation started increasing and the angle of incidence for which the angle of deviation is minimum is known as the angle of minimum deviation so in this graph this point corresponding to the minimum deviation will give you the angle of incidence for this minimum deviation to happen so angle of minimum deviation is the angle of incidence for which the deviation produced by the prism is minimum when you represent it graphically we can recognize the angle of minimum deviation because the first refracted ray for angle of minimum deviation will pass parallel to the base of the prism and here this prism's principal section abc the base of the prism is represented by the uh, line bc and this light ray passing through the prism is parallel to the base then this angle of incidence is the angle of minimum deviation and it will emerge out of the prism so angle of incidence can be increased or decreased maybe we can put the angle of incidence in this angle at 0 degree incidence and then also it will go pass through the prism and also we can increase the angle of uh, incidence to a maximum but for a particular value of angle of incidence the deviation produced here will be minimum and we can recognize in most of the diagrams in this chapter they draw the prism uh, with the first refracted ray parallel to the base of the prism and this is the position of the angle of incidence and the emergence for minimum deviation for a prism okay coming back to the second factor angle of deviation 
depends on angle of the prism. If the angle of the prism is increasing, the deviation produced by that prism will also increase. So it is directly proportional. And third point is refractive index of the prism. Refractive index of the material of the prism. The refractive index of the material of the prism is high, the deviation produced will also be large. So higher refractive index, more deviation. For example, if this prism is made up of flint glass, the refractive index of flint glass is 1.62 and if it is made up of crown glass, then the refractive index is 1.53. So flint glass having a higher refractive index will deviate the light ray through a higher angle. So higher the refractive index of the material of the prism, higher will be the angle of deviation. And the fourth factor is the wavelength of the light used. And among all these four factors, the last one, the wavelength is inversely proportional. If you use a light ray of higher wavelength, then the deviation produced will be less. If you use a light ray of lower wavelength, then the deviation produced will be more. For example, in the case of visible light ray, 4000 Armstrong unit is the wavelength of violet light and about nearly 8000 is the wavelength of red light. So here higher the wavelength, less will be the deviation. Lower the wavelength, more will be the deviation. That means if you are trying to pass white light through a prism, the violet light will deviate more and red light will re deviate less. So more deviation for which color? Violet. You have studied this in smaller class. We learned about dispersion of white light and there the violet light will be deviating more and the red light will deviate less. That's why when you form a spectrum, which you will study later, when you form the spectrum, violet will be at the bottom and red will be at the top. Violet into your blue, green, yellow, orange, red in that order, red will be at the top. So these are the four factors on which the angle of deviation of a prism depends. Okay, now we'll go to the next topic, which is relationship between refractive index and real depth and apparent depth. In real life, refraction has many applications. We see uh, that a straight object, a long road, maybe when dipped in water, it seems to bend from the surface separating the two mediums. So here you can see this picture here. When it is placed in water, when it is half immersed in water, we see that it bends at the surface separating the two medium. This is because of refraction. So I'll draw the picture here. So when we take a bowl of water and when you immerse a stick into the water, what really happens is the light ray coming from the bottom of the stick, when let this stick be AB and the light ray starting from the bottom of the stick, it strikes, one light ray is striking obliquely at an angle. So what happens is, This light ray striking at the surface bends away from the normal. Another light ray again bends away from the normal. If a person is viewing this, okay, if a person is viewing the bottom side of this stick from this angle, what he sees is the light ray when produced backwards, he feels that. The light ray is coming from this point, let it be C. So instead of feeling that the light ray is coming from B, he feels that the light ray is coming from C, another point C. 
Similarly, this is applicable to all the other points on the stick which is immersed in the liquid. So this makes the stick to be lesser in length when it is placed in the liquid. There are many other applications. When you stand inside water in a uh, swimming pool or something like that, for a person who is looking from outside the water, he feels that the length of your legs will be shortened and that is because of refraction. Or if you look at a water tank from outside it, from, when you look at it obliquely at an angle, we feel that the depth of the tank has been decreased when you fill it with water. Similarly, if a coin, when it is placed inside a jug containing water, we feel that the depth of the coin is not as much as it was before there was water inside the jug. So many examples are there in real life. Now we will study in detail the relationship between the real depth and the apparent depth. Apparent depth is what the depth we feel. So for that, so for studying the relationship, we will take a vessel. fill it with water and place a coin at its bottom. Let the surface of the water be named PQ and the coin is at a depth of O. A straight light ray starting from O strikes the surface PQ at an angle at a point A and it will pass undeviated because the angle of incidence is zero the angle of incidence is zero it's a it's perpendicular to the direction uh, surface pq and it goes in the direction of b so first light ray is passing like that now we'll consider a second light ray which is starting from o and it is going obliquely let this point be c so there we have to draw a perpendicular as normal and let the normal be n n dash so this n n dash is perpendicular or parallel to this light ray also because this is perpendicular and normal is perpendicular so what happens now the light ray emerging from o is trying to go from a denser medium to rarer medium so this light ray will bend away from the normal it will bend away from the normal and it goes in the direction let it be D. Now if a person is looking at this coin from the point D, it feels that the light ray is coming from this point I. Let O be the object and I be the image which he see from the point D. So this depth AO is the real depth of the coin. So real depth AO and this AI which appears to be the depth of the coin and that is the apparent depth. We have to mark these angles. This is the angle between the normal and the incident ray going out and that is the angle of incidence. And this is the angle between the normal and the refracted ray going out which is the angle of refraction R. Angle of incidence I and angle of refraction R. Now this is water and this is air. Now we are going to find or write the refractive index of this water air medium. So light ray is going from water to air. So we can write the refractive index of air with respect to water because angle of incidence is in water and it is going to air. So refractive index of air with respect to water that is sin i by sin r which is equal to i. We don't have any values for i given here. But we can transfer this i from here to here. How? 
because these two lines are parallel to each other this is perpendicular and this is normal which is also perpendicular so this i is same we can write it over here so now this is a triangle with a right angle over here so in a triangle we know how to find sine of an angle what is sine of i i sine is perpendicular by hypotenuse ac this line is ac and this is oc so i is ac by oc divided by sin of r so this is the angle r so this is a straight line which is parallel to this line then this is a transversal then this r is similar to this r, r over here they both are corresponding angles so we can transfer the r over here so again sin how will you take sin of an angle so this is again a right angle a small triangle aci so in this triangle sin of r is perpendicular by hypotenuse which is ac by ic so we are dividing fractions so what we can do is ac by oc into reciprocal of the base ic by ac ac and ac gets cancelled and what we get back is ic divided by oc now this is ic divided by oc now we can imagine that or now if this c and a are very close to each other we are moving this c very close to a then this ic and ia are almost equal in length so when c is close to a this length of ic will be equal to ia almost equal to ia and oc will be almost equal to ao therefore now we can replace uh, ic with ia and oc with the ao then our equation will become refractive index of air with respect to water is equal to instead of ic by oc we can write ia by ao oh this is refractive index of air but we need the refractive index of the medium that is water here so how can you take refractive index of water from here just take the reciprocal of that so refractive index of water with respect to air is equal to reciprocal of that ao by ia what is ao ao is real depth divided by ia or ai is the apparent depth so refractive index of the medium is equal to real depth divided by apparent so real depth is a bigger value which will be on top and apparent depth is a smaller value which will be written below so what is the refractive index of a medium the relationship between real depth apparent depth and refractive index of a medium what is the relationship the refractive index of the medium will be equal to the ratio between real depth and the apparent depth it does not have a value because it's the ratio now we'll try to solve a problem based on this equation that is uh, refractive index equal to real depth by apparent depth okay so here is a question the depth of water pool appears to be 2.7 meter the refractive index of water is 4 by 3 find the actual depth of the water pool and we can first write what all things are given there appears to be appears to be appears means apparent depth apparent depth is equal to 2.7 meter uh then what is given next 
mu of water, refractive index of water. What is the refractive index of water given here? That is medium 4 by 3. And then we have to find actual depth of the water pool. Actual depth is the question we have to solve. So what's the equation here? Refractive index is equal to real depth divided by apparent depth. which is, uh, we can write it again over here. What is the refractive index of water? 4 by 3, which is equal to real depth. Is it given? No, that's what we have to find. Real RD is not relative density, it is real depth. By apparent depth, what is apparent depth? 2.7 meter, 2.7 meter. So we'll real depth is equal to 2.7 will go here 4 into 2.7 divided by 3 which is equal to 4 into 0 0.9 which is equal to 4 into 0 0.9 is 3.6 meter okay so this is how we solve problems based on real depth, apparent depth and refractive index.